Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eat Up Mondays. Uh, before I get into the, today's message, just want to say thank you guys for all the, the feedback, you know, in the comment sections, all of the encouragement. Uh, just letting me know that you guys are encouraged by these videos. Appreciate the donations, just everything that you guys been doing. It is truly appreciated and is all love. And I truly want to say thank you. Uh, also, um, if you have not been checking out the In The Word videos, because I know some of you guys come on Monday and, you know, you've been listening to the Eat Up Mondays, please go to our channel page and check out some of those In The Word videos. They're a little bit longer in length. I go into a little bit more, uh, you know, I dig a little bit more into the scriptures when it comes to uh, certain situations and topics in the Bible. I think it'll really be an encouragement to you. And there's also some music uh, that I've made in the past that is on the page that I think may be an encouragement to you. So please don't forget to go check those out. Um, if you are somebody that have not subscribed to the channel yet, please don't forget to subscribe. When you click that subscribe button, please also click the bell. It will notify you every time we upload a video. Don't forget to like this video. If you like what you're hearing as we go along in this message, don't forget to like the video. Uh, by doing that, it will cause Facebook to spread the video out to more people. That way, more people will be encouraged on this Monday and the Lord's will it be done. So just want to say thank you guys. Uh, today, we will be coming out of 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to be reading uh, verses 37 to 40, uh, but I encourage you uh, to go back and read uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. There's so many good things in there. Um, and I always encourage people, listen, go back and read behind those that are preaching to you, you know, so that you can make sure that they're preaching to you uh, what the Bible is saying. And then that way also you can be learning in the process for yourself. But just to give you a little background on the story, a uh, familiar uh, story uh, from the Bible uh, that many of you may be familiar with. It's dealing with uh, David and Goliath. And uh, David goes to Saul, you know, because everybody's shaking in their boots. They're scared of Goliath, the Philistine. And David goes and says, listen, let me take care of this. Let me handle business. Let me take care of this Philistine. You won't have to worry about him again. There's no need for you guys to be over here shaking in your boots. And, you know, Saul tells him, listen, you're just a kid. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're getting ready to get yourself into. You're going to get yourself killed. And one thing I love about David is he doesn't let that deter him. What he does is he, he begins to testify to Saul about the things that God has done for him. And I think that's very key because, you know, when we have challenges or we have people come up against us or they speak to us in a way that, listen, this is not going to work out for you or you can't do this or do that. We have to remind ourselves of what God has done for us. And also sometimes we have to remind them and testify to them of what God has done for us, because in doing so, it may also encourage their faith as well. Amen. So I just want to pick it up from the 37th verse. You know, David began to testify uh, to him about how he had slew the lion and slew the bear. And we're going to pick it up at that 37th verse. Once again, it's 1 Samuel 17 and 37. The meal is prepared, guys. Let's dig in. Verse 37 says, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor. Don't miss that. And he put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go for he had not proved it. That word assayed there means to judge the quality of, to assess, to evaluate, to try or test, to put to trial. So the Bible is saying that he was he was ready to go, but in the midst of him getting ready to go, he's trying to, you know, just in the moment of this time, judge what it is, the quality of the, the you know, the different weapons that Saul had given him because he had not proved it. In other words, he didn't have time to test these weapons. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these for I, have, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. Um, and that's very powerful because what that teaches us is we can't allow people to put their armor on us. Don't allow anybody to put their armor on you. In other words, don't allow them to try to get you to do things the way that they that they would usually do it or handle things the way that they would normally handle it. You know, sometimes people mean well, but we have to understand that we don't, 
you know, God doesn't call all of us to handle situations the same way. And we got to be very careful because some people may have the right motive and mean well, but then you have some, which I feel, you know, even looking here at Saul, th this may have been the case. You know, sometimes people will tell you to do things this way or use something that they have to get something done so that when it is done, they can now get the glory for what it is that you've done because you use something that they have given you. So be very careful with that when when people are trying to get you to do things their way or use the things that they've used to get these particular things done. Amen. But verse 40 goes on to say, um, and he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And that's where I want to take my thought from is from that 40th verse, you know, and I want to let you guys know you already have everything you need. You already have everything you need. When you look at verse 40, it says, and he took his staff in his hand, chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. Once again, he already had this. He already possessed it, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. So what do we, we learn from this? That the things that he used was things that he had already tested. They were things that was a part of him that he already owned. And that's what I want to encourage you guys today, that everything you need to get the job done in your life, the thing that God has called you to do, the thing that you felt like you were born to do, you already have been equipped with those things. But sometimes, you know, we are trying to use other people armor or sometimes, you know, we're, we're just procrastinating and not going. And then sometimes we feel like what we need to use and to get the job done, it's over there or it's over here or, you know, what we have is not that extravagant. You know, uh, we, we need to get the newest this, you know, you, you may have some type of equipment to get some some type of job done. Uh, but you feel like uh, because you don't have the newest technology or the newest of that particular thing, it cannot be done. No, God is saying, listen, use what you already have. Use what you have already uh, proven. And guess what? The things that need to be added to you, you will find them around you. If you if you look at what verse 40 says, he says he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. So obviously the brook had to be close by. So if there are some things that you don't technically have uh, within you or at your disposal that you need to have, know that they are around you, but it starts within you. It starts with you. It starts with what you already have. And remember that God's, God doesn't judge, you know, by what you have done, um, you know, uh, something big that you have done, but he, he judges you by what you have done with what he has given you. It's not, it's not all about, uh, something being so extravagant and being so big, you know, sometimes, you know, people will make us think if we're not doing something, you know, uh, so great in people's mind that it's not that important. But that's not how God works. When we look at the, 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 the parable about the talents, it was all about what have you done with what I have given you? How, what did you, inv you know, how did you invest what I had given you? Whether it was one, whether it was five, whether it was 10, whether it's three, whether it's seven, I don't care what the number is. I just want to know how have you invested what I have given you? And that's the question on today. With the things that you already possess, how have you invested those things? How have you worked those things to get God's will done? It's not all about how big or how small to God. It's only about what have you done with what I have given you. It's not about the size. It's about you getting the work done. It's about you using what God has given you to the fullest. And two scriptures I want to read to confirm that. It's first Timothy four twelve through 14. This is Paul talking to Timothy. He said, let no man despise thy youth. That sounds familiar because remember, that's what Saul was telling David. He's, you know, he was saying, um, you know, you're too small. You know, you're nothing but a youth. And he is a man of war from his youth. So Paul uh, tells Timothy, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity till I come give attendance to reading to exhortation to doctrine. Here it is. Verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. 
which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Second Timothy one, six and seven. This is Paul talking to Timothy again. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God. See, there's the key. Stir it up. In other words, it's not going to get stronger within you. You're not going to get better uh, with it or at it if you are not working it. You have to stir up the gift of God. Watch this, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. And many don't know this is where this scripture come from. We say this all the time, but this is where this scripture come from was from what he was telling Timothy about stirring up the gift that was in him. It says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So he was saying, listen, there's no need to be afraid. You know, God has put the power in you, the love and the right type of mind to use what it is that he has instilled in you. So I am here to encourage you on this Monday morning or Monday evening or, or Monday night, whenever you are listening to this, uh, this message, listen, you already have everything you need. Stop looking all around. Stop constantly talking to people. Um, all of these different people for, uh, for their input. You know, we know that God leads us to people and sometimes we get you know, support from people. And sometimes we get counsel from people, but sometimes I find that, you know, we are, sometimes we're talking to too many people because guess what? We're afraid to just go ahead and step out and do it. You know, we're procrastinating and I'm here to tell you on today, you already have it. You don't need to procrastinate. I don't care how small you think it is, how big it does not matter. All God wants is results. So get it done, guys. Know that I love you. Remember, you already have everything you need. And until the next time we share a lovely, spiritual, healthy, strengthening meal together, know that I love you and shalom.